Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm gonna show the workflow that I use when making these kinds of nature b-roll videos. This includes the camera settings, filming and also editing. And I'm trying to keep this on a general level since I'm covering the whole workflow. So I'm not going into too much detail in this video. First we're gonna look at the camera settings. I usually film in 24 frames per second, but since I'm filming b-roll and I don't have a gimbal, I need all the stabilization I can get. So I'm gonna go with 60 frames per second. And then for the shutter speed, I doubled the frame rate number, so that's 125, since my camera doesn't do 120. This is a very good basic rule to follow for a smooth and natural movement in your footage. Next is the f-stop. This is where you can use your creativity. I'm having it as low as possible most of the time. My lens goes to 2.8, so we'll go with that. Lastly, I'm gonna set the ISO, and I'll try to keep it as low as possible, but depending on the lighting, I might change it when shooting. And now it's time to head to the forest to film something. I try to use different camera movements and angles to add some variety to the shots. Here I'm filming this moss by going along the side of the rock. Some other basic movements are sliding the camera from side to side, trying to stay as steady and as level as possible. Another option is going forwards and backwards, and I usually repeat these movements quite many times so that I can get at least one stable shot. Here I'm doing a similar move but sort of circling these mushrooms. You don't necessarily have to move your camera in every shot, and sometimes a nice still shot also looks great. I also try to get different frame sizes, like wide shots of the environment, then some mid shots and also close-ups of interesting details. And most importantly, I try to remember to enjoy the nature while I'm there. Alright, let's go and launch Premiere. First, I import my footage to the new project. And since I filmed in 60 frames per second, I will convert them to 24 frames per second. Then I start going through the materials, just trying to find sections that I like. Then I start to compile the clips on a timeline, and I often like to use the color labeling to categorize the clips. For example, here I colored wide, mid and close-up shots with different colors. Especially with bigger projects, this can be handy because you can label different parts of the video. And then I just reorganize the clips, trying to find a nice sequence that I like. Here I have organized the clips to create a sequence. The pink adjustment layer called CC on top is just a quick way to add some contrast and saturation to the footage. I film in log picture profile, which is very flat and gray looking. And I just like to add some contrast at this point so I can really see what the footage actually looks like. But I will edit the colors next. For color correction, I like to use the curves to edit the lights and exposure of each clip. I also use Lumetri scopes to see the histogram. Next, I'm playing with the white balance settings to give the scene the amount of warmth I want. I often use this comparison mode which allows me to see two frames at the same time so that I can better match the colors and lights of my clips. Here I also use the histograms to match the scenes. With similar shots, I try to make the histograms look similar as well. And this is how I go through all the clips. And my main goal is to fix any exposure mistakes and just make the clips look similar to each other. Next step is the color grading, which is when I try to go for a more creative look. I start by adding another adjustment layer where I'll be making the edits. This is where I like to saturate some colors or change the hue of certain tones. Here I'm making the blues a bit more turquoise and also trying to make the oranges pop a bit. The color grading depends a lot on what kind of project I'm working on and what kind of mood I want it to have. But the color curves are a good tool for this. 
I wanted to stabilize some of the shots, so I applied this warp stabilizer effect. I had reversed this clip earlier, and as you can see, you can't apply the effect to clips that you have modified in that way. This can be fixed by nesting the clip. So I just nested it and then applied the effect and works just fine. Premiere is now going through the clip and analyzing it, stabilizing, and it's done. Now I'm going back to see how it looks. Sometimes it can look a little wobbly and weird, but now it seems to look good. I went through the whole sequence to see if any clips needed stabilization. I had already added a song, but I later found one that I liked more. So here I'm adding that song and checking what it sounds like with the footage. Usually I choose the song quite early in the process, but in this case I knew I just wanted some ambient music, so I didn't have to cut to the beat or anything. And that's why I'm adding the music only now. But it seems to flow quite nicely with the video. Only thing is, it's too long. So I'm trying to find a spot where I can cut it and trim it down, but still have a nice ending to it. So here I found one place to cut and then finding a spot where I can join that and cut away the stuff in between. And to better blend in the cut, I use the crossfade effect by clicking Ctrl Shift D. Now for the ending, I'm adding one chord where I want the song to end and fading away from there. I'm gonna add my ending screen later, so I'm not gonna cut the music right where the video ends, so that I'll have music for the ending screen as well. So that's the chord and then the fade away. I'm deleting the rest and adding another crossfade. For the beginning, I'm also doing a simple fade in since I want the song to start a little bit faster. And I'm using this ease in effect to increase the volume exponentially. I also wanted to fade the last clip to black and I'm doing that by decreasing the opacity of the clip from 100% to zero. Lastly, I wanted to add some sound design, so I imported these sound clips. We have a magpie, a squirrel, some leaves rustling, so let's start adding those in. Here, the camera is really close to some plants in the foreground, so I added the rustling sound. I'm trimming the end, adding a fade in, and decreasing the volume. That sounds okay. Then I wanted to add the magpie sound. I found a good sounding part and dragged that on the timeline. Then I zoomed in on the magpie to see where it was actually making sound in the forest and just tried to time the sound clip with the movement. It looks okay. And then I decreased the volume. I continue to add some sounds for the squirrel and some general tree rustling sounds. I went on to tweak my edits and add my ending screen as well. And here is the final video.
Thanks for watching this video and let me know in the comments if you wish to see more content like this in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.